In this video, we're going to see how to implement CircleCI with a Spring Boot project in IntelliJ IDEA and GitHub. What we need are just a few things, a config.yaml file, a .circleCI directory, and then we need a CircleCI account that's associated with our GitHub account so that we can connect this all together. The config.yaml file tells us the steps of our pipeline and how they execute. CircleCI provides several by default for us, or if we have one that we prefer, we can go ahead and add it ourselves. So to add it ourselves, let's go to our project and all the way at the root, choose new directory, and then dot circle CI. Underneath that, right click and create a new file. And we'll simply call that config.yml or config.yaml. Let's go ahead and add this to GitHub. We definitely want to make sure that this one gets pushed to our GitHub repository because that's where the CI/CD pipeline is going to execute. Now, a good config.yaml file is something that you should save and be able to reuse in different scenarios. In this one, I have just several steps. Check out the project, compile it, store the cache, get the cache, run the test, so on and so forth. Not necessarily in that order. But what's important about this is the Docker image. The Docker image says, this is an environment where I am going to run the pipeline, where I'm going to build your project, and I'm going to run the tests. And the Docker image needs to have any dependencies that our project requires. I found this one to be the best at this point in time, circle CI slash openjdk colon 11 dash stretch. Uh, everything else here is fairly straightforward. So with that, I'm going to save and I'm going to go ahead and commit and push this to GitHub. Uh, noting right now I'm on the master branch. Now we take a look at our repository and we see, sure enough, add CICD configuration file. We have our circle CI directory. And inside of that, we have our config.yaml with everything I configured earlier. Now that configures everything. We still have to coordinate everything with circle CI. So circle CI, if you create an account, it will simply ask you for your GitHub login and it will, it will associate your circle CI account with your GitHub account. So, uh, it knows I'm already logged in here, so I'm simply going to choose Go to App. Now I go to Projects, and the neat thing here is it shows me all of my GitHub projects and it tells me which ones have been set up and which ones have not been set up. Spring Boot Microservices with IntelliJ IDEA is the one that I want to set up. Now remember, I got this just because the Circle CI and the GitHub accounts are associated with each other. So I'm going to go ahead and say Set Up Project. And now take a look, it gives me a choice to either use an existing configuration or add a configuration. Use existing configuration means that I have already pushed the YAML file up and I've created it by myself. Creating a new one, it gives us some templates here on some example YAML files we could use. I go to maven.java, I see, yeah, it doesn't really have as much as, as I have in my own. So I'm going to go ahead and say, use existing config. Now, have you added a config YAML file? Yes, I have, so I don't need to worry with download. I'm simply going to say start building. Now I'll take a look. It's looking at my repository, it's looking at my YAML file, and now it's running each of those pipeline steps. We'll sit back and relax for a moment as it works through each of those steps for the first time. Might take a little longer than usual just because it doesn't have a cache to work with, so it has to download all the dependencies. Let's click on success to see some more details and then build. And if we take a look here, we can look at each of the steps of the pipeline that have executed from spin up environment, prepare environment variables, check out code, restoring cache, go offline to grab our dependencies, save cache for the next time we run to make it a bit faster, MVM package runs our tests, upload our test results, upload our artifacts. Let's take a look at the tests. Three tests are passing. If you remember, we have three unit tests in this project, and this is indicating that they've all passed. Now let's go back to our repository. We'll take a look at commits, and you see there's a green check mark right here that now appears because our tests have passed. So at this point, it's showing us that our CI CD is engaged. And just in case you didn't see that on the previous screen, you see it here as well. Now let's kind of give this a negative test and make sure that it actually gives us good information if the test happened to fail. So we'll write an intentionally failing test. Uh, test, okay, void 
boy, this test should fail. And we'll say assert equals four, one plus two. So one plus two obviously is three. That's not four. We'll go ahead and save. And because this is continuous integration, continuous deployment, all we need to do is commit and push. So add a failing test. We'll come back over to our repository and let's take a look at our commit history. So add a failing test. You see right now it lights up in kind of an amber color to say that things are still running. So we can actually click here on details and we can watch the steps happen as they happen. So you see right now it's gone to restoring cache. Now it's going to run the test and we anticipate that not all the tests will pass. Uh, sure enough, look, we have an error. So CircleCI received Xcode number one. Let's go over to tests. We see one test failed out of four. We see a big failure sign over here. Now let's run back to our repository and you see red X. So we're getting good information that things aren't working very early. In other words, as soon as we commit and push. So you see that our unit tests which were written from our behavior-driven design, are an integral part of making sure that our commits work. You see green check mark, you see red X. Now, let's go ahead and fix our unit test and commit and push. We'll simply watch here for a moment as I did a little bit of that in the background, but you see fix failing unit test and you see the amber color. So let's give it just a moment. And you see the amber light turns into a green check, which is good news. It says everything's passed. We click on the green check. We go to our dashboard, we see everything looks good. We go to our tests and it says, good job, four tests are passing. So in this video, we've seen a simple example of how to implement CI/CD pipelines with GitHub and CircleCI and IntelliJ IDEA. I hope this video has been helpful and I look forward to reading your comments. Thank you.